So we're just, let's just jump in. Okay, sure. TV. Because you write television and you write theater. Mm -hmm. And so you are a playwright of some repute and some, some experience, and then you go to the world of television. What's the difference between writing in the world of theater and the writing in the world of TV? Um, well, you don't realize this until you've done it, but in theater, even though it's hard in every other way, you're spoiled because people tend to listen to you, <laughs> you know, because they might need you to fix something, <laughs> especially if they're an actor. And, and in TV, you get all that stuff when you get down to it. It's just getting through it. And in Canada, working in television is working in a, what a lot of people think is an unnecessary activity because they have all this access to American stuff. I keep hoping, you know, because on TV, on cable, there were some amazing things happening. And on British television, some amazing things. I just came across this show called Luther with Idris Elba. Uh, the best cop show maybe ever made, you know, full of integrity and bare knuckle strength. And British? British, yeah, right up to core. A full season for them is six episodes. So they actually do something good, and then they do something good the next year, four episodes. So you, I hope and want to do that. I want to bring just to be able to write. And push and shoving, you can do that. But you just realize that it's not... And it's not... Um, so there you have an idea, or you have a script idea, or you have a story you want to tell, and you go to global TV, mm -hmm. and you meet their... People. People. Their yeah. people. Okay, we'll call them people. Their yeah. peeps. Yeah. And how does that go? Well, they say... The last meeting, meeting what they began by saying, we, we were approached like from guys out west who wanted us to do this thing on witness protection, and we... I have a couple of people who work with us. I thought it was a great idea, because these cops have to work with criminals, really. Whether they're witnesses now or not, they're still criminals. They're messed up, and they're... Disorderly. So I thought, that's interesting, right? Having to help these people who are, like, difficult. And uh, so we wrote a couple of scripts, and uh, they began the meeting with, of course, these are brilliant scripts. There's, you know, what can we say? And then they said it. <laughs> the things they had nothing to say. Where they basically were trying in their own way to say, this is uh, too much, you know, it's, it's too much. Can't you just do it like, you know, uh, there's a template, you know, in American, for American television. That, just do that, you know, do, don't try to... We said, well, we just did what we thought it was. You mean template with characters, template Character, with acts, you know how to template do it, with you know, climaxes, how much template. you can... Yeah, how much you can... Well, basically how much you can say. Do you how have... Much you, to, how much you can say about... Anything. And how intensely you can say it. I mean, they don't say... It, it, they even have a hard time saying those things. But what they do say is, does it have to be like this? It's great and everything, but it's, you know... It's too much. It's too intense. It's like, you know, it doesn't follow any kind of particular structure. The, the guys aren't like, you know, we, what we like is a team, and they, they work together as a team, and then they overcome, and we go, well, sometimes that doesn't happen. We have no notion of where we're going. We're just trying to, trying to write a good story. So they're just trying to make something that it's not always, you know. And you cannot figure out what it is other than that it's American. It's on American TV. Could you do something like that? Could you do something like this? We go, well, I can't. I, I, that's what they do. I just want to tell stories. So it's hard. It's, you're, so, but is it polite then? And you walk away and go, no, it's well, sometimes polite. I'm not. I, you, just, I, I'm, I, I, I don't say I'm rude, but I'm a, I, I, tend to, I can, I guess, be short with them. Because um, it's bullshit. <laughs> Basically, you're having to listen to bullshit. And so you, you just But you ever say to them, look, that's a formula. And you guys... Yeah, are, you, we don't want to do the formula. And they know we don't want to do the formula. And... Uh, so you now when people come to me and say, well, will you take the show over and do that? I say, well, I, I will, but I won't do it in a way that will please them. I mean, I don't even intentionally try and do it, not to do it in a way that please them. I just don't do that, you know? I have a theories about this stuff. It's about how to write narrative. And in TV for a long time, especially, the narrative led the character, right? You, they would fit. I haven't been in some of those meetings where the writers would say, let's have him do this, let's have her do this. And I'm always saying... Don't have them do anything. Ask the character what the character wants to do, you know? So that the character leads the narrative. You do the narrative that the character needs to express, basically. And you even have an idea, then you still have to fit the character into that. And you don't do that as a writer. You do that by listening to the character. This is all a puzzle to them when I talk like that. And I say that's why it's, the narrative is so... I think like a, a graph, you know, so it goes like this on TV. It should actually go like this, you know? It should pulse and drop and... The, you know, that's like life. So it basically comes down to I would like to put the rhythms of life on television. And that's not happening here enough for me. And, and do they allow you to do that at all? Yeah, sure, sometimes. You know, I, I had a, like, a, there was a woman named uh, Like Michelle. living in your car? Or? Yeah, that's fine. I, those guys at, uh, on uh, TNN at the time, uh, <clears throat> 
at the time were women, very strong and smart women, Michelle Marion, uh, Erica Benson, who just wanted you to write well. Just write. They don't say, it's like this, it's like that. Just do whatever you do and do it the best. But the network TV is a, is a little different. And cable is, it hasn't found its real legs there, and those people are gone, and uh, other lesser, duller right. people right. who worry about... Uh, uh, I've heard a lot of stories about... Um, if meetings now and now network television, the most the, the people who are considered the most opinion whose opinions are valued or needed the most are the marketers. That's who you hear from. You can have an idea like this and they'll go yes, 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 but really in the back of the mind is what are the marketers going to say? Because right. they go out and try and sell this show and it's a demographic. And see, I think that's all crap. I think they've got it wrong. I don't think the marketers know what they're talking about. They don't market to anyone. This demographic they're marketing to has no money. They're not marketing to our wives, for example, who run the thing. They have, those are the women. The boomers' wives have money. There's no stores for them to buy their clothes. They don't understand all that, you know? They just don't get it. So even on that, on that level, they're wrong, I think. But on the basic level, I keep saying this, and I'll never do this job. If I ran a network, I would just say to writers, go do your best thing and bring it back. We'll talk about it. I don't even want to talk about what it is. Just do your thing. Do the thing you can do best the thing you would like to see on television, and come back, and we'll talk about it, and we'll try and make it even better somehow. That's all I would say. The <laughs> cynic in me says that's a, that's a utopia. You well, know, it's that's a, a, that's it's a, a, a small world utopia. that we think might exist, but there's network television read by, read by uh, marketers, and then yeah, producers, yeah. and then executive producers who say, George, just, no, 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 too much, George, too, too much, George. Exactly. I know, can we, can we make more like TV? <laughs> can we make it more like what we've seen for 25 years? Exactly. We want to see what we've seen for 25 totally. years. Totally, absolutely. I mean, it's a small utopia, though, Robert. I mean, it's just a little. You're allowed. <laughs> I'm a little. It's you're just a little allowed. corner of the world you want to change a little bit. And then you watch this stuff, and you go, uh, and then I guess you, you look at what's been ha happening in Britain on television and the best of cable, like, you know, um, Homeland and, and Boss. So, uh, and can you tell me this, why in the Canadian experience do we not have the cojones to either do the HBO cable route or the UK, French, German route? That we go this bland TV network uh, American route. Because we were given that. That's the American thing, right? That's, the, that's oh, our yeah. danger, what happened to us. We just got all this stuff implant, planted on us. And it's the weird, so they're simulcasting. We're getting this, you, you can watch it on CTV or you can watch it on NBC at the same time. Why well, does that make any sense? What other country has to go through that? If we're going to watch Grey's Anatomy here or Grey's Anatomy, the American version, the same thing at the same time. So why are they even existing?